Good morning and welcome to our live stream where we're going to be talking today about where to find some really awesome vintage and antique sewing and dressmaking, less make, uh, lace making and all sorts of different handicrafts types of sewing books online that you can get for free, which is really awesome these days. Um, I'm just going to check in to see if we have anybody logging in with comments. If you're out there, let me know and we will get this party started. Um, let's see, let's pop over to the Wayback Machine. Now, if you have not found Internet Archive yet, this is really a gold mine for pretty much everything. I use this thing constantly and it, it's a really rich repository of everything from the history of the internet. You can look at web pages from back in the dark ages of the web. 1994, you'll probably find one of my first websites that I built back there. And uh, it's a little bit different and a little bit more archaic than what you get today. To, you can find film, you can find uh, photograph, software. There's all kinds of different things that you can find on archive.org. But what we're going to be looking at today is the dressmaking. So when you're looking here at Internet Archive, um, you, can, you can put in a search term here, or you can come down and uh, scroll through and pick through one of these different collections that they have. But we're going to pop over to dressmaking. I guess it will not return anything if you don't spell it correctly. <laughs> so what you get here is a whole bunch of different old dressmaking books. Uh, we have over a hundred and twenty, over over a thousand of them, and they go all the way back to 1680. Now a lot of those hits from the earlier periods. They're not really dressmaking books per se. Um, they're, they're different types of, of texts and probably aren't what you're, exactly what you're looking, but they're really fascinating to poke through if you have some spare time. Now over here on the left side, you can arrange and change what time period you are wanting to look at. So for our purposes today, we're going to look at 1800 to 1900. And you can choose the media type. We're going to pick texts. And so this kind of narrows it down to what we have here. Um, uh, it's just a whole bunch. We got 167. So if we want to pop over to one of these books, um, we can pull this one here up. Uh, I love some of the names on these. Oh, good morning, Amaris. It's good to see you. Uh, good morning, Psycho Cat. It's great to have you. Uh, welcome to the live stream today. Uh, feel free to comment and ask questions as we go along because, you know, that's why we do it live is so we can have this conversation. Um, so looking at some of these books, let's see, this oh, it pulled up where it was earlier. So when you're looking at them, there's a whole bunch of different information here. And first of all, you have the title. I love this. Professor O.H. de la Morton, Self-Teaching Instruction Book for the Parisian Champion Scientific Tailor System. I mean, we don't name books like that anymore. And it's really sad that we don't. <laughs> uh, and it gives us, you know, the author. It gives us um, dressmaking. It gives us the topics, it's where it's from. So the Library of Congress is the one that put this in there and some different information. And then over here on the right, we have download options. So there's a number of different ways that you can download um, these books. Um, yes, the question was where, what's the name of the site? It is archive.org. And so there's a number of different ways that you can download it. You can download it to your Kindle. You can download it as a PDF, an e-publication. Um, and there's just 
a whole different way range of ways that you can uh, download this book. So when we look at it, um, you can look at it in this version. You can look at it um, in two. You can look at it in four. Um, you can zoom in. You can zoom back out. And then you can use the scroll bar to go through, or you can use these little arrows over here to go back and forth. And I think this is one of my favorite ones because just the pictures are just wonderful here. Uh, it kind of talks a little bit about the tailoring system and then it launches right into it. Um, a lot of these vintage dressmaking books and a lot of these vintage books uh, really assume that uh, you have a certain proficiency in sewing, so the terms they use might be a little bit more difficult to suss out if you're a brand new sewer, uh, but that's why they make encyclopedias. <laughs> um, so this one here, I love this one. This is one of my favorite ones. And it goes through and it talks about uh, taking measurements and then how to draft out different things. And then this is a little bit different than a lot of the vintage books is it gives these great finished garment illustrations so that you can visualize what the pattern looks like and what the finished garment looks like. And that to me is really valuable. Good morning, Kathleen. Welcome. Glad you can uh, join us today. We are now looking at archive.org and we are looking at a book from 1897. And so I just love this one here. It just gives you lots of different ideas. And then here we have another uh, pattern that's being drafted along with what that garment looks like. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come in. So this um, gives you where, where you need to measure in order to use this um, particular system. There were a lot of different types of pattern drafting um, systems out there. And so you just kind of have to play around and find one that works for you. So let's, let's poke around at another um, book before we go to the next one. Um, some of them are more uh, image oriented. Some of them are more text oriented. So part of the fun is just looking around and seeing what they have. So this particular one, Every Lady Her Own Dressmaker, The Scientific Lady Tailor System for Cutting Ladies' Dresses and Coats. No Fitting to Do, Improved and Simplified. I love the titles. <laughs> um, and if, it's funny because in this period, everything is scientific. I just love this. And again, there's a number of different ways that you can access this. You can download it to your Kindle. You can download a PDF. Um, it's showing where it's from. Sometimes they will have rights information here. So if it's copyrighted, that information will be there. Uh, since this is from the Library of Congress, I would assume that it is uh, licensed under at least Creative Commons. So let's take a look at the interior of this book. This one looks like it's going to be a lot. There we go. Um, so again, this is kind of a pattern drafting. And if we pull up here, it kind of just runs through the different measurements you have to take and, um, you know, what you need to do in order to make these patterns. I've done this with uh, a walking skirt, made the pattern for that. And it was surprisingly easy to follow and, and draft a pattern. Um, there was some fudging once I got the mock-up done, but for the most part, it was, it was not as hard as I thought it was going to be. So there's that. So let's take a look at a little bit later set of books. We'll, we'll go to the 1950s. Once you get too much after the 1950s, then you start to run into copyright. Oh, 
I've noticed there's this little glitch in the system that it, it gets kind of cranky when you want to uh, change the date there. So it starts early and goes to later. So we're just going to scroll down to some later ones. I hope I don't make anybody. <laughs> so we're going to go down to dressmaking. So here's the subject. Um, if I do just dress dressmaking, all of those Vanity Fairs will disappear and it just leaves us books on dressmaking. Let's look at this one here. This one's from 1912. So this is uh, here in French. So one thing you're going to come across in, in archive.org are books in foreign languages. And I really want to encourage you to not be scared off by some of them being in German or French or Spanish or any other language because you can download these, run it through an, uh, an uh, OCR, you know, a text reading system, and then use a Google Translate to translate the document. So there's a lot of way to access foreign language documents that we, we didn't have 10 years ago. So don't be put off by these um, books in French or German. So I'm going to pull that off and see what we can find. Hmm. Okay, let's go back up to the top. I was hoping to find some that were a little bit later. Oh, that's why. Okay, let's go by date published. Okay, let's go here. So this is um, 1949, uh, today's clothing, uh, put in there by the University of Alberta. Again, lots of different ways that you can download it and access um, the, the document. I tend to download as PDFs, um, but sometimes I will also download for my Kindle if it's something that I want to read later. So this one here is awesome. It has a little bit of information about hats. You'll find that a lot of these are, are kind of text heavy for some, um, but once you get into like the mid 1900s, you know, you're getting a lot more photography in the books. And, and that can be good for showing what the finished garment is. Um, but I find illustrations are really best if I want to see what's going on with the, the garment. And so this, oh, those are cute, those clam diggers there. Um, and so these, these texts are just a really good resource, no matter what time period you want to um, look at. So let's look at some later vintage type. books. And so we're starting to get into an area where some of these books are still going to be under copyright. So what happens then is you, you can't really um, download the book itself. Uh, but what you can do is click this borrow for an hour. You will need to set up an account for this, but if you hit borrow and then go to the page you want, you can screen capture this um, for your own use. And then if you need to uh, extend the, the time that you're borrowing it, you can um, go ahead and add time to it just like you can at the library. So this is a great way to get um, some of those later vintage books of, that are out there and available. Um, just be aware that, that a lot of the, the more later ones still are under copyright. And so what you can do with um, the files and the images that you use are a little bit, little bit more curtailed. Uh, the next one that I wanted to talk about is the University of Wisconsin at Madison's um, collection. And this is um, another one that we can uh, access. Let's read more. So um, again, they have a lot of older ones. The search function here is, is not as um, granular 
uh, as before. So let's take a look at this one. Um, and this one here is a little bit more problematic because you um, you can, it's, I won't say problematic, the, the ways you can download it are more narrow. So you can take a look at it here. Um, and just kind of scroll through the pages. This one is a little bit harder to get through. So let's go to page 31. Let's see, let's uh, go down to page 48. So this is an older one, an older book. So just remember that some of the information about uh, clothing from other time periods, their uh, cultural, um, <laughs> we'll say cultural wisdom is a little bit lacking sometimes. Um, so as you're looking through some of these books, just remember that they're written in another time and sometimes don't have the same attitudes that we have today. But uh, the University of Wisconsin um, library is, is just kind of fun to, to pick through. Uh, these practical millinery ones are really good if you are all interested in making hats. And uh, let's go to let's go to page 29 we're just going to put pages at random pages at random um so here we have uh different hats different ways of making it um she kind of runs through some different time periods again grain of salt for historical accuracy uh just like when you have a modern hollywood movie uh any renderings of past clothing and uh, fashion styles is through the lens of whatever's popular now. But there's some really great illustrations in this one, and this is one of my favorite ones. Let's look at... Yeah, Kathleen, um, some of these books are just a wealth of wealth of information, and um, that's why <laughs> I'm doing this today so that you guys can find some of these resources that are out there that you can access, pour yourself a cup of coffee <laughs> or a cup of tea or whatever adult beverage you may want. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Good morning, Georgine. Uh, welcome and um, it's great to see you here today. We are talking about uh, various online books that you can find for free. And currently we are at the University of Wisconsin uh, into their database and looking at this book on millinery. And so here, this is, you know, how to shape books. I mean, shape hats. And so this is, if you're at all interested in, you know, doing uh, historical clothing, uh, hats were such a big part of the entire look or headdresses or the way they did their hair. It, it really completes an outfit. Uh, a lot of the times when you look at historical movies or TV shows, you know, they might do a really good job of getting the historical clothing kind of sort of right. But then they have their modern hairstyles, which, you know, looks kind of out of place, but it, it it allows the modern audience to access that um, particular aesthetic. And so this is a great book. Let's, let's pop out of here again and pick one more from this one. Um, let's put Lippincott. And we're gonna go down to page 25, just some random one. Um, so a lot of these older vintage books uh, were kind of a more general education about home economics, um, you know, domestic uh, economies, and really were a tool for um, people at that time to become better educated. A lot of times these address etiquette and social mores and were oftentimes, you know, useful for people who were going off to college, maybe from a very rural area, 
and learning how to sort of fit in and dress and act and behave. So they're a really interesting time capsule into that time period. And then just going to pop through, um, you know, this one here has really good information about textiles. And the ones where we're really fortunate where they spend a lot of time talking about textiles is to really understand uh, what was in practice and what was in use then. A lot of the fabrics that they, they used back then, they just, they're not available anymore. So we have to find ways of using modern fabrics that uh, resemble enough those, those textiles that they used back in the past, but we have to know what those textiles were, how they behaved. So using these types of vintage books and vintage resources um, are super useful for understanding that. So that's the University of Wisconsin, and we'll go on to the next one. Um, this is basically just a collection of, of resources. It's just kind of a, a bunch of links, and it's, it's a little hard, more difficult to um, navigate, but there's, there's some really good sources in here. So let's go look at the Cyclopedia of Textile Work, Volume 3. This is from 1913, so if we look at a sample page, um, again, this is talking about textiles and going looking at um, a nice diagram for weaves. If we look at, where was that book? Where did I find it? There it is. Um, this is the table of contents. And then if you wanted to, you can download it as a PDF. This one seems to be in different parts, so we're just going to pick one at random and then download it. Okay, so this one here is looking at knits. Oh, I like this one, the evils to look for and how to remedy them. <laughs> So this one is a, uh, has some great information on how knits were, were created back then. And it's really interesting because, you know, modern technology has changed quite a bit. But, you know, in the end, a knit is a knit is a knit. It's a single thread that goes loopy, 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 and pretty soon you have a pretty sweater. Um, although the technology has changed quite a bit, you know, since knits came into being back in the 10th to 11th century um, in the Arabic countries. Let's see, close that one. So the next one website that I wanted to show you, um, and all of these links will be in the description below that you'll be able to access once this uh, uh, video, um, the replay becomes available uh, later today or tomorrow. So here you can pick out different um, topics and looking at beading, there's some really good books here. Let's look at um, oh, perhaps beading. Okay. Uh, I picked beading, but it's not going to beading, so let's just pick something else. Oh, here's a beadwork one. Um, this will just automatically start to download a PDF. So this one is talking about beadwork, um, how to do it. And this one has uh, patterns for doing beaded purses. Uh, there was another book I came across yesterday when I was doing some of the background for this. Um, that had more patterns for beaded purses. And so, if, you know, if you're doing um, 
uh, an impression that's, you know, 1910 to 1913, this would be a great one for you. It also has, let's see, if we go into woodworking, um, this one here is woodworking plans. Again in French, but don't be um, afraid of those. Now these are different architectural pieces uh, for tables that I just thought was super cool. Uh, let's see, where was, there was one here that was for making rooms. Uh, what? I had all of these tabs open and then I accidentally closed Chrome. So, <laughs> oh, the joys of, of live TV. So anyway, you can kind of play around. One of these books had, had some loom patterns, which I thought was super interesting. So you can just kind of poke through this one um, and, and see what they find. Oh, there it is, the new bead book. I love this one. This one has uh, colored images. I mean, seriously, I love these. <laughs> I want every single one of them. The hard part is, is finding the hardware these days. Uh, so what you might be able to do is, is look through vintage or thrift stores and find something that has a damaged um, a body that you can use reuse the hardware for but here we have different um, patterns that you can use to make those um, beaded handbags next up is project gutenberg i'm going to close these so i don't confuse myself now they're more limited here on project gutenberg um, Project Gutenberg is, is really for a lot of um, uh, public domain uh, books to be uploaded so that, you know, they're preserved over time. And again, you know, all of these are free. So if we go in here and look at dressmaking, some of these websites are a little bit slower. There we go. Um, this one only has 10. Um, if we go over here to Le Atelier de Marie Claire. Now this one, you can read it online. You can download as Kindle. Um, you can also, um, I believe some of them you can download as PDFs. But here you can look at them online. Now, Project Gutenberg scans their, the, the books, so the format is going to be a little bit wonky. Oh, this one is a book. <laughs> so if you want to read a book <laughs> about um, uh, different things uh, around uh, dressmaking in France, <laughs> Okay, so they don't have much for dressmaking. So if we look at uh, this one here, Textiles for Commercial, Industrial, and Domestic Art Schools, um, there's a whole range of books that were meant to be um, textbooks. So some of those are really useful. Oh, that's not useful. Um, so some of those textbooks were are useful to kind of give a grounding in in how things were being taught then, um, you know, what things were important when they were teaching them in schools. So those are kind of fun to check out. So let's look at the next one. Uh, so the next one is the Smithsonian Libraries. And again, we have different collections here that you can just, you know, pour yourself a cup of coffee or a tea and just kind of pop in and play. If we come over here to Handicraft, there's a whole bunch of different books. Um, there's a basket maker in rural Japan if you're interested in Japanese uh, basket making. Uh, there is books on tapestries, um, 
block printed linens. Let's take a look at that one. So when you pull it up, um, you will see that there's a viewer, but there's doesn't seem to be a way to download it. So again, you'll need to go to the page you're interested in and take screenshots. Uh, so here is uh, different block prints. Those are pretty. I would have that as wallpaper. <laughs> uh, these kinds of books are super useful if you are looking to buy um, uh, fabric so you know what to look for in modern fabrics and, and reproductions. I think that these were meant to be more for um, possibly uh, interior de decoration as opposed to being worn on the on the body. So if we're looking down a little bit, um, let's look at a manual plain needlework and cutting out. This is 1884. And let's see. So this is ta this page is talking about darning. That's always super useful. Um, oh, that'd be kind of a cool way to do it. See that? That's super cool. Can, um, can you guys see that? I'm going to pull it up one more. So you don't have to do plain darning. You can have these lovely little patterns. Let's see what else is in this book. So when we're looking at cutting out, okay, so this one here also has pattern pieces that you can um, use. So this is 1884. And there's different patterns for different things. So if we look at the next one, the Metropolitan um, Museum of Art has a number of different books. Now, if you go to their main website um, at metmuseum.org, they'll have some of these books here. And a lot of these books here are uh, books on previous or exhibitions. So if you look at this from Queen to Empress, um, this is from a, a former exhibition. You can read it online through Google Books. And it's just a, a lovely little book about um, Queen Victoria. So there's a, there's a number of different books there, but if you go to the Watson uh, digital collection and do your search there, uh, you get a lot more of these um, out of print um, books. And this one here kind of caught my eye earlier. It's a catalog of different fabrics. So I mean, right here you have, you know, all sorts of different um, things to look at. Let's see, for navigation, you can download it as a PDF, as an image, you can print it off um, to get through the document. It looks like you scroll down here and you can look at uh, individual. And so this is useful for finding out, you know, how much things cost, um, fabrics that it was made out of. Okay, on to the next site. So the last website um, here to share with you today is uh, this particular one. And again, it's a bunch of link. So it's just a matter of, you know, checking out uh, the different collections that they have. If we want to look down at embroidery and fancy work, there is a whole bunch of different ones here. Uh, let's look at embroidery stitches. Um, oh, this one takes you back to the Internet Archive. I didn't catch that earlier. 
That's super useful, though. <laughs> so, that is pretty much what I have for you today. Um, wanted to know if there were any questions, you know, feel free to drop them into the chat and we can get those answered. Uh, once this is available for replay, I will be checking the comment section for um, questions that, that you might have. If you find one uh, from the links that you really, really like, feel free to share, you know, your discoveries in the chat so that uh, other people can enjoy that. So all of these links will be in the description below once this goes live to replay. And, um, you know, feel free to comment and let's, uh, let's see what we can help each other find. So until I talk to you next time, I bid you joy. Thank you.